Hi, my name is Alexandra, and I'm a bibliophile. Welcome back to A Lovely Jaunt, where we read better, not more. Today is the first video that I plan to make for Jane Austen July. I plan have plans to cover all of her major novels with the classic Alexandra analysis, along with her lesser known works. But you know, I am generally really bad at sticking to my plans, so we'll see what actually happens. As for today, we're going to take a brief look at Jane Austen's biography. Now, I'm going to be doing a real high-level treatment here. There are actually a ton of resources because she's such a beloved novelist and historical figure, and I think we have a real romance for the Regency era that there are people who have done fantastic work on this, many Jane Austen scholars, and it's not hard to find a lot of information about her because she is so popular. So while I'll be doing a high-level treatment, I actually want to go over a few resources that I think are really great as well. So most of the information that I got is going to be from the introduction to this book, which is Catherine and Other Writings, the Oxford Classics Edition. This is a great collection of Jane Austen's Juvenalia, which we'll be talking about actually in my next video. I also found a fun little documentary on YouTube, which I will try to link below, that examined Jane's life through basically her geography, the places that she lived in, sort of take us through a different tour of her homes and the cities, and, and told us a little bit about both her life and also what the environment would have been like. Also, the host was great and she had this like, just cute style, man. I, I always really enjoy it when people have a clear sense of style. Anyway, bonus points there. And then finally, Chawton House, which is the final home of Jane's life in Hampton and where she really had the space and the time to complete her major novels. Um, they have a really great Instagram account that I have been enjoying following. And so I think you might enjoy it as well. All right, so enough about a few resources to explore. Let's jump in. Jane was born in 1775 in Hampshire, where her father was the rector. The Austens family spent their early years uh, as simple gentlefolk in the old-fashioned rectory there. They were not landed gentry, so they were not, say, as wealthy as the Bennett family, if you will. But they had close relatives who really were, and especially on her mom's side, some relatives that were quite genteel indeed. Her father had to make it a living in one of the gentleman professions and so did her brothers. Her family connections were even aristocratic like I mentioned and they also often had to depend on these important connections for advancement in their lives. Jane's older brother Edward, not the oldest brother in the family, but Nonetheless, he was adopted by relatives of her father, the Knights of Godmersham Park in Steventon. Is there anything more Britishy British than that? They were a very rich and influential family who were unable to have children of their own. And it seems that this was sort of the plan of the families, that they often, the Austin sort of often put Edward forward as a guest in their home and, and put him forward for adoption by this family. And it's not too hard to imagine here the connection to Fanny Price and Mansfield Park, sort of reimagining that, but maybe for a female child. When eventually Edward took over this property that he inherited, Jane and her sister Cassandra visited Godmersham Park alternately, and this actually has furnished our history with a lot of letters between them. There were, however, eight Austin children altogether, and while Edward was sort of swept up to the highest level of society, she had another brother, George, who seemed to maybe have special needs, whether that be physical or mental, but he was boarded out for his entire life. So you really see these two polarities sort of exemplified in her, in her family. And like I mentioned, Edward wasn't even the, Aust the oldest son in the Austin family. The oldest was James, who was to be educated at Oxford and go into the clergy like his father. Francis and Charles Austin were both sent to the Navy, which again calls to mind Fanny's relationship with her brother in the Navy. So yeah. Jane Austen lived most of her life at home, but she was sent out to be educated twice with her sister Cassandra, first in 1783 to a woman named Mrs. Crawley, who taught in Oxford and later moved to Southampton. Jane, Cassandra, and their cousin, also named Jane, Jane Cooper, there caught what was probably typhoid, and Mrs. Crawley neglected to inform all of their parents about it, presumably in order not to lose the income. But their cousin, who <laughs> was also there, like I mentioned, 
did write to her mother, who is Mrs. Austin's sister, and they all removed the girls. And while each of the girls recovered, sadly, Mrs. Cooper, the, the aunt, caught it and died. In 1784, Jane and Cassandra went to the Abbey School near Reading, run by a Mrs. La Tournelle, an assumed French name to give the impression that she could fr teach French, which she could not. Many Austin scholars sort of think that Mrs. Goddard's school in Emma is based on her experiences here, which is not very flattering. It's this idea that, you know, the girls were taught more to be vain than were given any, like, useful education. However, Jane's father and brothers were very involved in Jane's education. Surprisingly not her mother, who, com again, comes from a very sort of genteel background and had a great education herself, but it appears that her mother was not overly involved in her daughter's education. They were a reading family. They clearly read ex extensively. They all loved novels, even though <laughs> they were considered perhaps lighter fare at the time. Her father and the rest of her family clearly supported her writing. The volumes included in her juvenilia are fine notebooks that were gifts from her father, and they were very much involved in getting her published as well. After her father retired from his religious career, he moved his family to Bath, and Jane is quite well known for not really liking Bath. Soon after her father's death, she, her sister, and her mother moved to Southampton, and then again soon thereafter that, her brother Edward Knight created a small cottage in Chotton, Hampshire, where she was really able to focus on her writing, and that's where she did most of it. She was already working on her major novels, so she had first impressions, but it was there that it got revised into Pride and Prejudice. She had Eleanor and Marianne, which got revised into Sense and Sensibility. She had Susan, which was really rewritten as Northanger Abbey, and then she would go on to write Emma Mansfield Persuasion and begin Sanditon there. And then she died in 1870. So that is just a brief overview of her life, of her education, of her relationship with her parents and family, and a little bit about her writing career. There is so much more information out there about Jane Austen. I have merely scratched the surface, but for the first week in Jane Austen July, I hope that sets you off on the right foot and that you're enjoying reading her novels just as much as I am. Until next time, I'm Alexandra, and I'm still a bibliophile.